Well, I really love Phymosin Beta 4, um, which is also known as TB4, and it's also confusingly referred to as TB500, even though technically originally that was meant to be something else. Um, so in fact, yeah, I might as well get to that straight away. So TB4, Phymosin Beta 4, the original version of that is actually kind of like the OG Phymus peptide. So the Phymus being the um, uh, one, of the, one of the most essential constituents of the immune system, as we have uh, discussed previously. Um, and so as we get older, our Phymus gets less big. And as our Phymus gets less big um, and less strong, then it's able to produce less of these peptides, which support the uh, immune system. So Phymosin Beta 4 is actually the biggest of those peptides. It's a chain of 43 uh, amino acids. And um, Phymosin Alpha 1, which we've talked about before, is more of a like 50-50, some boosting, some regulating action. Phymosin Beta 4 is like pretty much 100% regulating. And so if you want to deal with maybe supporting your body through potential infection, then I would do that with Phymosin Alpha 1. If I wanted to support the body in not having an excess inflammatory response to anything, whether it's an infection, whether it's uh, an allergen, whether it's a, a burn or a cut, you know, whatever it may be. And in fact, injury, which we'll talk about in a second, is one of the main reasons that this is used, uh, then I would use Phymosin Beta 4. And of course, in many instances, I would actually want to use both. You know, like if I had a cut or a burn or an infection or something like that, then I'd want to both boost my immune system to deal with anything, plus I would want to um, control the immune system as much as possible to not have an excess inflammatory reaction. The reason why this is so huge, I don't think... Um, you know, you need to be told that inflammation is bad. I think everyone knows that these days watching this. Um, but I don't think we sometimes appreciate how bad it is and how many different systems it affects. Um, you know, the digestive system and the joints are things that we frequently think of. But um, And these days also the cardiovascular system with, um, you know, more issues about that becoming more common. Uh, but, it, you know, it's also affecting your brain, for instance, right? There's a uh, uh, brain and nervous system. There's a lot of uh, talk these days in the scientific community about how maybe things like depression, especially, and also anxiety and certainly cognitive decline and all the rest of it can be caused by inflammation in the, in the brain and in the nervous system. So inflammation is a hugely big deal. Um, as to how we got that mess in the first place of being chronically overinflamed, that's something I talk about in detail in um, uh, other videos. But, you know, for right now, just say whatever reason you're in the mess and whatever lifestyle stuff you also need to change to deal with it, Phymus and Beta 4 can be really great. Now, this is actually where I first discovered peptides because I was looking up um, mold illness or mycotoxin illness. And so mycotoxins are an interesting thing that they um, really poison the nervous system. They really um, also stop the immune system from functioning properly. So they cause the immune system to be more inflamed. And that's why one of the things that mold illnesses refer to is as um, SIRS or CURS, chronic inflammatory uh, reactivity syndrome. So this is where basically your body starts having an inflammatory reaction to everything, or it seems like everything, right? Um, like every food, every supplement, every herb, every particle in the air, everything you touch, you know, it can get that way and it can drive those minority of people who experience that like mad. It's really, really unpleasant. And so they were recommending Fiamps and Beta 4 as a way of just universally, holistically calming that whole inflammatory response down so that then the person could actually start to heal. So that's how I first got into it. It actually did help me with that. I had mycotoxins and heavy metal poisoning very high levels of lead which also creates that inflammatory response um and so i had to um uh try and find something that worked and this was i would say along with cbd in beta 4 and the next one we'll talk about were like some of the first things that 
got my immune system to calm down and stop reacting to everything. So I always had a special place in my heart for that reason. Now, there's another different type of uh, thymosin beta-4 called TB500. So thymosin beta-4 is 43 amino acids in a row. And you can actually take a piece of one or a piece of another, or a piece of another, and then they're actually different things. It used to be that that middle piece from 17 to 23 was referred to as TB500. So what's the difference? I've just said that TB4 is like generally anti-inflammatory, but I was massively um, simplifying. It actually has loads and loads and loads of different functions, which are very beneficial. Um, now, the middle part, the 17 to 23, is the specific anti-inflammatory part, or seems to be. And so um, if your issue is purely inflammation um, and you have no concern for the immune system, so for instance, if you've sprained something but are otherwise in a very high level of health and you're only trying to reduce inflammation, you're otherwise very, very happy with your health, then you would probably want to go for it's often called fragment 17 to 23, which is just the um, anti-inflammatory component of TB4. Why would you want to do that? Well, you get a lot more of that component, right? So if you get 10 milligrams of TB4 uh, or versus 10 milligrams of this fragment, you're going to get a hell of a lot more of those fragments within that 10 milligrams. So if your goal is just to reduce inflammation and nothing else, that fragment is often better. Most companies these days seem to not even know the difference. That's one good way of telling a quality company from another, I'd say, is if they make that distinction and if they offer you both versions, the vast majority do not, not a guarantee, obviously, but it's an indicator. Um, and so I really like to have both around. I like to have TB4 for like general wellness purposes, like I talked about earlier with the mold and heavy metal toxicity. I actually found out that TB4, for instance, is one of the only things that detoxifies lead from the body. Um, almost nothing does. So that was quite exciting to discover that. This thing I'd be getting benefit from, this might have been one of the reasons why. Um, so... I, I personally like to have TB4, but I like to have the fragment around as well if there's any like more acute inflammatory situation where I want something to heal. Um, and that one, TB4 and uh, BP157, that I'll talk about separately, those two are often um, marketed or recommended together as like a dream team for healing. So earlier we were just talking and I want to um, kind of get back to that with um, the inflammation and things like that. And I know we were discussing with um, autoimmune diseases. If somebody has something like, let's say, rheumatoid arthritis or something that's, you know, always it's the immune system kicking in, lots of inflammation, what would you, you know, what would be best for them to look at? Uh, well, in the realm of peptides... I would use thymosin beta-4. That would be the number one recommendation. Yeah, it would be this one for that regulating um, uh, effect. Um, yeah, that would really be the main one. I Like, you know, with a limited amount of budget, which most people have, I would put it into that in terms of peptides. But of course, there's a bunch of other stuff uh, which we talked about in detail in the uh, chronic pain episodes. Absolutely, yeah. So um, we'll put the links below for all of those other um, episodes that we have done so that everybody can go and take a look. And then I wanted to ask, Elwin, um, what forms are available for these? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I, there's actually several with this one. So uh, I've seen it available injectable, as it all, almost always is, but I've also seen it nasal. And I've seen it um, uh, actually uh, in a capsule form. So um, for you to uh, go for your digestive system. So I'll talk about the relative benefits and drawbacks of each. The, the only time you'd really want to use the digestive one is if you're trying to reduce inflammation in the digestive system. The reason being because it's not that well absorbed. So again, unless money is literally no object, you're going to get so much better value by having it injectable than you are with the oral version. But if you want the healing and anti-inflammatory effect to be localized to your digestive system, which many people do, right? They've got leaky gut, they've got, you know, uh, Crohn's disease or, you know, whatever kind of inflammatory situation going on, then that would potentially make sense. 
Um, the nasal one, I had that before from a company. Um, I did not feel the same benefit from it. My understanding is that it might be similar in that it um, will have a localized effect. So it would be good for reducing inflammation in the sinuses. Some people say it crosses the blood brain barrier better there to reduce inflammation in your brain. I haven't found that personally, but perhaps it's because I haven't had inflammation in my brain to a degree that that's noticeable. So it would certainly be worth a try if I had, you know, say, you know, strong depression to use a TB4 nasal spray. But the injectable is certainly um, the best value for money, the more immediate effect as well. Like you'll feel it within a few minutes. And what would you say is your favorite form to take it in? Out of those two, if I had to choose, usually the TB4 rather than the fragment because it's hard to explain, but it just has a more, as I said, broad spectrum benefit. And if nothing else for me as well, I know it's um, there's a section of it that the body uses then to transport heavy metals out of the body. So I want that benefit as well. So Ellen, for the dosages for TB4 and TB500, what would be the mainstream or what would be the guidelines there? Yeah, that's a great point. Well, this seems to be another one, and I've said this before about Phymosin Alpha 1, where there doesn't seem to be any upper amount that is bad. And so the main thing that's going to limit you from um, taking more is going to be the cost. The general recommendation I've seen is something like half a milligram to a milligram a day. But I have seen prominent people in the peptide world talk about look if you've got a real issue like the one you mentioned before for instance rheumatoid arthritis um, Chrissy you could have five milligrams ten milligrams a day the thing is ten milligrams might cost like a hundred dollars so that's a lot right that's that's too much for almost anyone um but it may be not if you you're really suffering, right? This is a choice that people make. And sometimes, you know, their healthcare is already very expensive and it actually may be a bargain compared to that. But certainly if you're paying for it out of pocket um, and you do not have something that's severely um, debilitating, that can seem excessive. So as I said, the upper limit is really how much you're willing to pay rather than um, <laughs> how much can you have safely. Uh, I personally, you know, cannot afford, uh, I'm not willing to pay for five or 10 milligrams a day. Um, but so I, if I'm being generous with myself, I'll probably go for something like uh, half to one milligrams a day. 